Okay, thanks everybody for coming along. Um, really big numbers. So um, this is the first of three noise careers events. You got a flyer on your way in. So um, this is preparing your art portfolio. And um, the other two events that we'll have next Monday night, we have Thinking Outside the Lens. So we have some um, industry people in from film and animation to give you some information on that. And then the Monday afterwards, we're focusing on other aspects of gaming that people might not think about, like the art and the sound. So we have two speakers along for that. Um, back to this evening's talk, we have, um, it's been a change to the listings, um, the Institute of Art, Design and Technology unfortunately couldn't make it, so we have NCAD, Bally Fermat and Tala IT here to give you some information. We have some students and some faculty on hand, um, so you'll get to see some of their work and they're going to give you a little talk and then basically we're going to have a panel discussion and they'll, you'll get a chance to ask them some questions. So from the National College of Art and Design, we have Josh, who's a second year sculpture student, so he'll be talking to you in a minute. Um, then from Ballyferma College of Further Education, we have Owen and Adam along to speak to you. They're both fourth year students. Um, from Tal IT, we have um, Jerry, Tom and Jerry, actually, <laughs> which is funny. Um, so on your seats, you'll have noticed we have um, a question and comment slip. So basically the idea of this is it, while the students are speaking or the faculty are speaking, if you have any questions you'd like to ask and you just want to remind yourself or if you want to hand it along to one of the people at the end of the row, we'll collect them after each speaker and then we can uh, um, read them out at the panel session. So just if you want to write any of those down um, while they're speaking. Um, so um, I'll hand you over to Josh first, who's going to tell you a bit about his work and his experience. Thanks. Hello. Um, I am hanging on now. Yeah, there. My name's Josh, uh, Josh Joyce. I'm in second year sculpture in NCAD. I went through Coyer last year and uh, did my portfolio the year before. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the portfolio. So yeah, well that's loading. Um, speaking from my personal experience, NCAD is a fantastic place. Uh, I really can't say enough good things about it and the people who are there. Um, if you're going for a career in um, art and design, it's, it's fantastic. Really, go for it. Try it. Now, that's my experience. I'm sure there's other colleges out there that are great too, but uh, I can't endorse it enough. So um, I started my portfolio when I was in sixth year in school, so it can be done. Um, and it's, it's, it's a lot of work. That's one of the big things. You will kind of put in all of your effort towards it because essentially what this is, is this is you selling yourself to someone. This is you saying, hello, this is me. You want me in your college, I'm great. <coughs> so um, the first bit was the mind maps. Uh, the course is a visual course. It's all about art and you know, kind of visually representing things. And so I include a lot of images in my mind maps. And I know from personal experience, when I open a page and it's got loads of words, I go into like a proper meltdown. Um, so <laughs> I try to break up the words for myself. Uh, you can see, I worked in A1. Uh, this is a lot bigger than A1, so there's no else. But um, these are all kind of images from my mind maps. I think ours were vehicles, my place, um, enclosures, and something else which I've forgotten. But these are, these are my vehicles. So you can see that they're not all cars and stuff. I used to go and you'll see a lot of these repeated through some of the other images. Um, and it was really just a case of trying to use every medium available to you. Because you want to show that you can work at anything. You can, you know, if they say, right, work in clay, you can take, pick up clay and go, I'm going to give it my best shot. So uh, there's a couple of more shots of the mind maps. Um, you'll see more of these again. There's the wheelchair, there's kinds of stuff. So some of the other things weren't actually physical objects um, that I could have used, but there were ideas I had that I kind of liked. Uh, that was instruments, that was the other one. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we'll move on from there. Uh, and this is my place. So I kind of kept a running theme of doo -doo -doo -doo. now again, this isn't a how-to, this is just the way I did. Um, you'll see, I am I'm actually colorblind, it's a funny fact about me, which is a terrible thing to be for an artist, but hey. So <laughs> I worked a lot in monochrome and uh, very colors I like it to. So that's a kind of a thing about my uh, The first bit was part A, which was take apart the television. Now someone threw this television at our house one night, don't know why, just the kind of thing that happens in the nighttime. So I brought it inside and I took it apart. Um, the first thing I did was I took it apart in the style of kind of like an engineer's diagram. And then I said, that's kind of, that's okay, but it's not great. How could I advance upon this? So I actually used part of the television to make a clock. 
Um, and the scary part was when I reopened my portfolio to take the photos last night, that clock was still ticking. <laughs> and then I said, yeah, what else could it be? It's a clock. Could it be a fish tank? Could it be um, a flower bed? All these different things. And you can see I use actual parts of the TV to spell out things and just really trying to use everything. If it doesn't work, stick it in a notebook, you know, and then you write, it didn't work. Um, that's really the key to it. Uh, hang on now. This was, I took a pair of a flower. It was called the Sickleman. Um, this flower actually was sitting on my desk the entire time I did my portfolio until I had to take it apart. And uh, I had grown so attached to it, I went to a flower shop and bought an identical one and took that one apart instead. But that's, uh, that's just me again. So uh, you can see different, they were real clothes pegs, bit of string, uh, the leather kind of milk carton, anything I could get my hands on. I was notorious for stealing people's stuff in the house. And you'll see that <coughs> probably in these. Oh, and this is the next one, uh, conditions. You have to do pick an object from your mind maps and put them under different conditions. Now, I did this one on my holidays. Uh, we went to a place called Fert Adventure, which had these big windmills called Molinas and Molinos. And um, I thought they were class. So this is my windmill. Now, the condition I put it under was buried. Um, but one of the kind of things that you were and weren't allowed to do in this one was you weren't allowed to use typical drawing mediums. So no pencil, no pen. And at first I thought, ah, and then um, I kind of got into the swing of like, you know, that was a lot more fun. That was sand and glue, you know, that was wool. Uh, there was socks, because I buried in socks. Um, that was a great idea until I had no socks afterwards. Uh, these are train tickets, because I used to have to get to train every day in school, so I had a massive pile of train tickets. Just start gathering things that you think we use. There's bits of a tree from Freud Ventura. There's, you know, uh, a little windmill I made out of clay. This is the one I did while I was abroad. So there's surf wax, because I did a little surfing, and a big pile of surf wax. Butter, because um, it's so hot out there, you could actually just melt butter in the plate. So this is melting. Actually, I probably should have said that first. Um, they, these were chocolate, uh, but this portfolio, like I said, is two years old, and the cat one night ate them. Um, so <laughs> there was a melted windmill there, and there was one in my hand. There's some photos there, if you can see them. And there's some ice, and a melted down. And this one was made out of sand on the beach. And I thought the tide would come in and wash it down, but uh, instead the tide didn't come in that far, so I had to use a big gallon of water over and over and over and over again. Um, so there's some little clips of it there. This next one is uh, my little brother has cerebral palsy and has a wheelchair, and so like any nice older brother, I took it stuck it in a tree because <laughs> one of the things we had to do was put an object somewhere you wouldn't find it, and I thought, where's well, the only place you wouldn't find a wheelchair is in a tree because I would get up there. Um, so again, I'd learned from the past page to use different mediums. There's kind of some straws and foam, and there's a lot of, you know, photography work done on this one, and I use newspapers, and there's wire and everything. Literally just using anything I could get my hands on, I tried making stuff out of. Um, and that's hopefully what I think what got me. This is another one. These were just kind of keeping on the theme of me being an absolute thief. These are my dad's biker goggles, and I put them in his cheese sandwich. Um, he wasn't madly impressed by that. So you can see I actually did make it into a cheese sandwich with those photos. I did kind of a how-to, and then I made it out of felt, because I'd never worked with felt before. I tried a lino print, not so great. That was my first time trying lino. Uh, and then I did some stencils and kind of different materials and stuff. So those ones up there, once upon a time, were really tactile. They felt like what they were, but they weren't that. They were kind of newspaper and high gloss kind of things. and Just really try everything, right? <laughs> Um, then this is our part B. Part B, we had to combine two objects. So you've seen the gun from the mind map was combined with a trumpet. So there's my gun pit. Um, okay. Again, <laughs> so this is a, an aluminium can, uh, tin foil. I loved editing photos. I don't know if you can see them. Um, there's, I thought this one was great because it kind of demeans him totally. <laughs> but yeah, this is just different things I tried and kept trying. And uh, there's Louis Armstrong playing the explosive. Uh, trumpet, um, and there's some other shots of closer ones. And this was our the final part of the portfolio was part C, which was problem solving. Uh, the problem we were given was how to get snow off a roof. Now you can see some of these are totally impractical. I thought about blowing up the house. There's going to be no snow left in the house, hopefully. Uh, building it upside down, but then the, you know putting giant windscreen wipers on it. But then there were some practical ones like uh, doing snow angels on your roof. Um, you know, I made, took a remote control car we had and I made a plow, tried plowing the roof, uh, which was lots of fun. Uh, this one, I made a maquette of the house, it was about this high, and represented the snow with cream and it had the dogs like a dot. Um, 
that was a video piece as well, which was included in. So again, I think what's important is I, everything I could do, I did. Like you know, uh, we'll move on again. <laughs> and then this one was um, how to exercise an animal. That's my pet ferret Simba. <laughs> and what we did is we sprayed ferret food through like toy soldiers and then took photos of her attacking their base. Um, that kind of thing. So again, just doing everything you could. Also, I played a game of foosball with her on the table, which he thought was brilliant. Uh, and there's me weighing my portfolio uh, at the end, because that's me under 10 kilos. So that's it done, and the funny thing is it does get done. You just really have to go hell for leather. Um, Coyer, this is a picture of our studio. Um, it looks very crowded there, but that was just because someone had pushed our wall backwards. Don't know why they did it, but it's not that crowded, it's actually great. <laughs> so these are the kind of typical studio spaces. Um, and it's an excellent experience, Courier. It's really like anything you want to do, you can do it, and they give you the materials for it, so it's fantastic. Like, I would have thought I couldn't paint, but I did a module in paint and turned out, you know, I was all right at painting, that's great. I never knew what printing was, tried printing presses and everything, and you get two weeks' experience, well, we did anyway, in um, separate areas like this sculpture workshop and kind of, um, oh, I did sculpture and print. So this is some of the work I did in Courier. I was kind of fascinated by sculptures that had a lifespan, really quick, you know, kind of thing. So these are tiles, and for, there's actually a video on YouTube if you want to look it up, just Google my name, Josh Joyce. Um, and oh, for the entire day, all I did was stack them, and knock them down, and stack them, and knock them down, and stack them, and knock them down. Uh, and then I started, like, freezing things. So this is television going through a window, and you can't really see it in the photo, but that's all balanced on glass. And then I graphed behind it, all fake science. I'm not a scientist, really bad at that kind of thing. You know, why this happened. Um, so you, you can see that the kind of variation in the work really goes through it. And then towards the end of the year, I started making traps for people. Uh, these people, I didn't know them, by the way. What I had was I photocopied tenors and stuck them under the box. And you'd be amazed at the amount of people you catch. <laughs> and uh, this table, when you pulled out the chair, it all fell down on top of you because it was tied to the legs. So um, I kind of got rather sculptural towards the end of the year. But there's other people who didn't. And you know, they went into paint, and it's really fantastic. You get this great consolidation period at the end when you can really do whatever you want. And that's, it's one of the fantastic things about NSADs in Courier. It's, it's kind of free, but at the same time, it's structured. But until the end, uh, at the end, you get this like six weeks block where you can do whatever you want, and you've built up this kind of skill set and this knowledge, and you can just go for it. So, this is, I think, my final image. Um, my entire desk space for my last rotation was a trap. Uh, we had, you know, set out like everyone else's with all the pictures. As soon as they sat down in the chair to judge it, it flicked on a pump that sprayed black ink all over the space and destroyed it. <laughs> this is one of the images that it destroyed, but um, that just goes to show you that you can literally do anything. Uh, just work away at it, gather everything you can. Uh, Sketchbook-wise, always have a sketchbook on you. Draw everything and anything and draw it badly. It doesn't really matter as long as you draw it. And um, really, that's about it. And I'll probably talk to you in a bit. Thank you. Cool. You're welcome. Thanks, Josh. Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. I just realised I'm Emma Creighton and I'm facilitating this on behalf of South Dublin County Council, Noise, um, Contact Studio, and the Library. Um, which is yours? Here? I can find it, Tom. Do you want to start, yeah? I can find it there, yeah. So. I'll just hand you over to um, Tom and Jerry again from Tab IT. Uh, hi, folks. Um, so, uh, Jerry and I are just going to talk to you very briefly uh, in five minutes uh, to give you an overview of the Creative Digital Media course at IT Tala. Um, so, the course is designed to uh, prepare you for a career uh, in the media industry. Um, and Jerry's going to just uh, show you on the PowerPoint here. Um, just a, a few of the production areas that you, that, that you do. Um, the open day uh, for the Institute is um, on uh, the 15th of November. Okay, So if you want to go into uh, IT Tala and have a look around, um, that's when you can do it. Um, I would just say that as someone who's kind of gone through all this many years ago, that I think it's a really good idea um, to go and visit the colleges. So go to NCAD, come over to IT Tala, go to Dunleary, you know, go, go, go in on the open days and see if you like the feel of the place, you know. Um, it really tells you a lot about the place, I'd recommend it. Um, you can look at our website as well, uh, which is creativemediadegree.ie. Um, and for third year students on the course, uh, 
designed um, and uh, made that website. So it's a creative media degree dot IE. Um, so it's a four year degree course. Um, we don't actually uh, accept entrance on uh, <coughs> portfolios, it's just on leaving cert points. Um, so I think the points to get into the course at the moment are 350 points. Um, uh, the, our philosophy is that um, although a lot of what we do is geared around production, so it's geared around you know, making photography or uh, making films, making websites, um, some of what we do um, is uh, uh, theory subjects, um, so cultural studies, uh, you even do media law and you get the opportunity to do language as well. So um, people have different strengths and weaknesses and um, you know, some people aren't necessarily as strong on the visual side, other people are. For example, one of the things that uh, students come onto the course to do is the audio module. Um, so um, that's just a summary of the course. Uh, Jerry has just run through a couple of PowerPoint slides here which show some of the production areas that we do. Uh, and we are available afterwards, by the way, to give advice on portfolios. Um, and uh, applying uh, to courses, media courses. Um, you know, I went to art college myself, so I, you know, I did a portfolio and got into art college. So I've been through it and can give some advice. Jerry. Thank you. Yes, we have four broad areas that you study. Production, which we'll concentrate on this afternoon. Theory, business, and the language option or audiovisual technology. Our course is unique because it has this combination of theory, business, and production, as well as including uh, a number of production areas. These are just some of the theory subjects. So it's quite grounded within theory as well. And business, because you will ideally be working in the industry. We can give you more details about these later on. Um, the production areas are probably more interest to you. We have design studies in multimedia, television and video production, audio and radio, and photography. And over the, course of four, over the course of four years, you'll be doing quite a lot of work within the production areas. So between 70 to 75% of your course time is spent in production. So you're actually working quite a lot across at least three of these sectors at any one time. That means that you're multi-skilled, and it means that you're able to deal with all the changes that are happening within the industry, particularly in relation to uh, the technology. Quick overview of photography. We started with 35 mil photography. Indeed, you make your own camera in year one, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, year two moves more into Photoshop and digital photography. You then start specialising in studio and documentary photography. And in year four, it's all about creating um, your own documentary uh, advanced portfolio work and so on. A very sort of personal work, which we display every June in Rua Red at our end of year show. Audio a lot of radio pro production in year one, uh, year two adver adverts and soundtracks for films, and then we move into more uh, interesting items of drama and documentary, music recording and so on. Television and video, year one it's TV studio production, year two uh, is um, location interviews, year three is t TV commercials and experimental work, and year four is quite often short drama and documentary work. Multimedia starts off in year one with design, studies and graphics, uh, very much sort of within sort of screen-based work. It's not a journalism course, by the way, so just do keep that in mind if journalism is your passion. This is not where we're at. Uh, year two is flash animation and 2D environments, quite often sort of um, uh, very basic uh, animation. Year three, uh, this was a slide from two years ago, director, I think we've moved on a bit from that into more advanced websites. And year four, is um, 3D animation and um, flash and recently sort of uh, high definition uh, video productions. So that's really all I want to say about what we do. Um, we do have links with other colleges throughout Europe and, and indeed some students do spend some time in other colleges abroad. And we do have a end of year show. I think it's now the first week in June usually. And these are the type of professions that people gravitate into. And this is some of where our recent graduates are, are now currently working. Give you a flavour of the areas that they, that they work in. They work across the, the board. I think that's all we want to say. Tom and I are available uh, in the corner to discuss any elements in relation to the offering of ITT Dublin. Thank you.
So next up we have um, Owen from Bally Firma College for Further Education. He has another partner in crime to be with him and he might arrive halfway through so he's going to put in the memory stick but Owen has some of his work on paper and he's going to talk through that as well. So just to let you know that halfway through somebody else might be joining. Him. Okay, like I say, uh, I've lost my partner in crime. Um, he was supposed to be showing a lot of the work. I was going to go through the interview process and a bit of the portfolio preparation and that. Um, so I do have a bit of work that I'll show as well. Um, for Ballyferma, for the portfolio, um, they're really focused on life drawing. That's a big focus right the way through the whole five years if you stick it out to the end. Um, kind of when people come out of secondary school, they have a level and within the first three months probably like that like you'd see your level jump up a huge amount on it um for actually getting in there um they expect a certain standard but generally leaving cert art standard is usually enough um personally i think i got in more on my interview than on my portfolio because it is a big part of it um you know going in there having a little bit of confidence in your work um you know your your image is important both in terms of yourself how you put yourself across you know don't go in wearing raggedy jeans and crappy old runners and that you don't need to wear a suit but just look after yourself a little bit uh, and same for your work just you know don't have crinkled up edges and that sort of stuff on it um if you show a little bit of passion you know even a, a, an interest even in what you're doing um, it goes an awful long way, you know, to be able to talk about what it is that you're interested in, um, why you want to do it, any that sort of stuff. Um, it, this all helps. Um, for the interview, um, I find it easier to let the, whoever is interviewing you ask the questions. Um, it's just a little bit less stressful, I find. You're not trying to think up of what to say. You know, obviously prepare a little bit, have a few answers ready, but try and let them lead it. Um, but then when you're giving your answers, you can push them towards where you, what you want to talk about and that. Um, for your portfolio, it's really important to start strong and finish strong. Um, you, that uh, keeps getting repeated to us over and over again. Uh, your first piece and your last piece are your most important bits in your portfolio. So you usually start strongest, put your, your very best piece in first and then put your second best piece last and just fill in the middle with whatever else. The idea is you catch their attention when they open up the first page and you leave them thinking something at the end, they actually come out of it with a bit of positive in them. Um, so, like I say, life drawing is important, still life, all that sort of stuff. Um, a notepad, something you'll get used to while you're in college and it's a good idea to get used to it beforehand. Um, so, see if I can find some just anything like you know still life this is all stuff mostly i think i started in fifth year about halfway through fifth year i started so just any sort of life drawings that you have that was just a very simple storyboard that i did of a coke can disappearing or seven up actually disappearing into nothing Um, just some more still lifes than that very basic character drawings like i say i got in on my personality i think not my drawing Um, there's just some more character designs uh, more of the same um, and then I just did an actual proper storyboard through to the end of it um, I think that's about it um, oh yeah that was a project we worked on in uh, in secondary school so if you have anything like that um, something that you would have worked on as a group with other people you know we do a lot of uh, a lot of collaboration throughout the course of the five years um, I know in the in fourth year last year we had to make a movie between five of us and the group dynamics is a big important thing you know so if they can see that you're able to work within a group that's going to give you more positives coming out of the interview um like i say that's about all that i had prepared for it adam was supposed to be bringing up a few nice life drawings to show you um we're going to be over there. We're happy to answer any questions to go through portfolios. If anyone has anything in with them, we can have a look. We can give a voice. We have some more examples of stuff. We have our own movies that we made last year. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So I'll drop over if you want anything.
they'll have a laptop with them, so he'll sh they can show some of the work then, maybe, um, when you're going around at the end. So um, if you have any question sheets or anything filled out and you want to hand them up um, for us to read out during the panel session, Tori will be going around there picking them up from the end. So if you want to take a minute to write down any questions or anything, um, but you'll have a chance to ask questions yourself if you, if, they, if you think of them. So just while you're doing that, I have some, some of the key dates for some of the colleges pulled out here just to give you these. I'll leave these up on the slide as well while you're going around the room. I'll have all three colleges on it. So NCAD has changed a good bit this year. So if any of you have brothers and sisters or anybody that's gone before, um, every application is made through the CAO this year. So just take note of that. There is going to be information sessions in November, though, so definitely go along to those. Um, Teresa will be running those. So um, there is a brief that you follow now for CORE um, that um, Josh would have followed as well, so it's important to go along to that. The open days on 6th of November, and as Tom said, it is a really great idea to go along to the open days because you get a real feel for what the colleges are like and what the courses are like. And then the portfolio submission is the 8th of February, but you have to put your application in for the CAO before that, so just to take note of that. Yeah, the 1st of February, yeah. And then there are other courses as well. There is industrial design and visual culture and things like that. But check out the NCD website and you'll have all the information there and the prospectus as well, which Teresa has with her. Um, then for Ballyfermot, um, they just have rough months at the moment, I was given. They don't have set dates. So the applications open in January and February, so there's an opening date and a closing date. It's not one day like in NCD. Um, the interviews and portfolio review are in March. That date will be set, but keep an eye out on the website. I think it's bcfe.ie, is it? Um, and then there's late applications as well, so if there's still places left on courses, so if you do change your mind and you haven't gotten it in, do check, and you can probably apply late, and then they have interviews um, late as well. And then for IT Tala, as Tom said, the open day is on the 15th of November, and application for this, of course, is through the CAO as well, which is 1st of February. Um, but more information will be available in the prospectuses from the colleges. And I'll leave this up during the talks, um, but we'll just go on to doing a panel discussion. So if you want to hand up any of your questions now, and I'll invite all the speakers up to sit up here. Okay, I'll start off with this. So um, where do you get your portfolio back in the different colleges? That's the question. Um, I just, uh, you know, sorry, just speak for NCAD because um, I actually deal with the portfolios. Um, I'm head of first year, uh, Theresa McKenna. So if ever you want to ring in, you know, you can you can get directly to speak to me. But the portfolio, um, we assess the portfolio in um, the week. The, the Friday is the eighth, isn't isn't it? The eighth of of or did we say the eighth of February? Yeah. Yeah. Was it the eighth? Yeah. I think yeah. It's not the Monday. Or the no, that's the, that's that, that would be the Friday. It's a Friday. Okay. Well, the Monday next, after that, we start looking at the portfolios. We look at them for two weeks, so all the portfolios are in. If you're in a hurry to get your portfolio back, you can actually organise and give us information, and we do do sort of special situations where we will give them back to you after the third day or on the first Saturday. But we look at them for two weeks. And after that two weeks, you're expected to have them back. So you, you have them back immediately, we're finished with them. And you know, if, if you need them back uh, after the first week, you can arrange that. If you need them desperately back, um, you know, day one, day two, day three of, of, of our assessing them, you can arrange that particularly with us. So there's, there's no problem with getting your portfolio back. Because some dates might overlap. In the yeah, you may, you may have to go down to Crawford or up to, to, to Tala IT or out to Valley Farmers, you know, or, or DIT or whatever. Um, we're, we're absolutely flexible. And Owen, how um, oh, Sorry. Okay, it's, uh, it's a while ago at this stage, so I'm not 100% sure, but as far as I would remember, um, you bring your portfolio with you for your interview and you take it home with you. Pretty sure that's the way it works. So they don't actually so. hold on to it at all. It's the same in Colossal Dulig as well, because I taught there for five years and the portfolio was assessed at the time of your interview. So you were basically in there for 20, 25 minutes selling yourself. And that's a big thing about the portfolio is that you have to sell yourself to say, I'm the, I'm the right student for your course. It's sort of it's complete reversal of what you would normally expect where they, they think the college is looking for you. You have to sell yourself to the college. And that's very important. Yeah. Um, a big question um, from a lot of students. I say, has the core year in NCD stopped happening? 
No. <laughs> no. No. Um, the fact is that um, NCAD made a decision to uh, go to a three-year degree, um, three-year level eight honours degree, rather than a four-year degree. And the first year um, is still a diagnostic interdisciplinary year. But what happens in the first year now, instead of it being a whole year of interdisciplinary studies, so you could be studying art, design, you know, and crossing them over, um, what, we do, what we're going to do now is you're going to come in to an interdisciplinary period of time, okay? So some of the first year is going to be absolutely um, similar to what, what is, goes on now for the whole year. Then you're going to have a period of time where you've decided, I want to go to design or I want to go to fine art. And they're quite different really, you know, in, in, in the sense of how you, how you approach them and how you experience them. And the, the, the second period of time is that. But then the third period of time, you've maybe decided that you want to be in design. Um, well then, you will, during that second period of time, you will decide, okay, it's very particularly fashion I want to go to in design. Or it's very particularly visual communications, which would be uh, graphics or illustration. Okay, so you then go right down to the very particular, and before you come into second year, you're already in your department. You know, you've chosen your faculty, then you've chosen your department, and you go into second year, and you're actually already a student of that department. So that's the only difference. It's just um, a period of time where first year. Um, is the same kind of experience as core, but with the faculties and departments already involved. Can I just want, it's Adam yeah, from sorry. that firm, which has just joined us now, so he's going to join us this year. Um, but he'll have some work, you have a laptop with you, Adam? Uh, I have a laptop. Yeah, so you can show the work afterwards because of um, the presentation. So, um, has anybody got any questions before going to these? In relation to any of that, Jeff? Um, did they call you back when you were getting there? Um, you're told when you're putting it in um, that it, you know it's available to you and you're expected to collect it um, on the Friday of the, the second week of, of us looking at it, or the Friday of the first week if you want it. You know, in fact, I think one to three hundred numbers, one to three hundred. You know, when you come in, you get a number. For one to three hundred, they ask you if you if you want to come in and collect this on Friday, that the coming Friday, you can. You know, and then obviously everybody collects it after the, the second Friday. The quicker you collect it, the better, really, because you know you should have your own work in, in your own hands. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Can I ask how soon you're called to interview after your work has been assessed? Your portfolio. In which? If you're called for an interview, is there an interview? Process? For NCAD, there isn't an interview. That's it. It's, it's just so that there's, there's no personality we, involved. We 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 do we do um have the hold the right to interview, you know, if, if we require it. Um, but to be truthful, very few people, you know, would be very rare that we would need to call anybody. The only interviews in NCAD are for product design. They oh. they operate on an interview and that's later on in the year. I think that's I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'll just roll into that. Is that, is that okay? Yeah. yeah, because what happens is um, product design um, the students come into first year the same as all of the other students, but they're already selected into product design as, as a program. Um, and uh, those students uh, don't have to actually prepare uh, a portfolio from the brief, but we've always said that it is, it is advisable to look at the brief and to maybe do some work from it for product design. But they're called to interview and they bring their work with them in the same way as the other programs do. They bring their, their work with them, and everything happens at the one time. So it's an interview and work, and that happens in April. April, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is, you know, February, March, April, so there's a, a, a bit of extra time. And there is some information, with that, that interview, there is some information on the website, and they send out a letter as well to outline what they're kind of looking for. So yeah. they're kind of looking for um, that the student might be, you know, thinking kind of a design way, design-oriented and things like that. Um, and they ask to see some kind of design oriented work as well. So and, and the information information's in that yeah. as well. I have lots of them. Um, what do photography courses look look for? 
Oh, um, well, I teach the photography module at IIT Taller, um, but um, I, I, I did a photography degree as a student at Edinburgh College of Art. Um, but when I actually applied to Edinburgh College of Art, I applied to do illustration and ended up doing photography. So I didn't actually apply with a photography portfolio. Um, but if I was looking at a photography portfolio, you know, if someone was applying, you know, uh, to you know, to me, um, I suppose I would uh, echo what um, Josh is it Josh? Uh, oh, Owen, sorry, 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 you're joking. Uh, um, but, um, you know, uh, definitely, um, you know, oh, I, I would put my best stuff first. Yeah, definitely, you want to open and you know, don't, don't I wouldn't organize it chronologically. Yeah, to put the stuff you did like. Uh, early on first and your latest stuff and your most recent stuff at the end of your portfolio. Yeah. If anything, flip it the other way around. Your most recent, freshest stuff first, but definitely the strong stuff first. To, to finish well is important as well, um, but really I suppose I'd be looking for a strong portfolio throughout. You know, you'd want everything to be, to be good. Um, heavily edited uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. heavily edited. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you know, don't go for quality rather than quantity. Absolutely go for quality go, yeah. rather than quantity. Yeah. Um, I think anyone looking at a portfolio is is looking for um, ideas more than technique. Yeah, you know, I don't wouldn't want to see photographs which are necessarily you know highly polished, brilliant advertising style photographs, really slick looking. It doesn't it doesn't really matter because you know you're going to get taught all that anyway. Um, I, I I'd be much more inter interested in in, in um, narrative themes. Yeah, ideas, um, interesting ideas, um, not just interesting ideas dotted all over the place, but I'd really like to see the development of ideas as well. Experimentation um, would be a big part. Experimentation, yeah. 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 But, yeah. But, but that you can develop an idea and follow it through, you know? Um, so uh, photographers quite often um, produce uh, portfolios of work or bodies of images around a particular theme, yeah? So I would steer clear of doing, um, you know, here's a photograph of a lovely sunset, uh, and here's a kitten in a needlework basket, you know, um, and uh, here's a photograph of my gran, and you know, um, but try and work more with um, what you're interested in. Photograph what you're interested in. Photograph, photograph you, you know. Um, that's what I think anyone looking at a portfolio is interested in. Ideas, development of ideas. Just, just to add that, I think that's what's really important that people remember that um, they are of this generation now and that's what we should be working about, you know? Rather than trying to do what's already been done in the past, to actually make sure that what your work, no matter whether it's for photography, you know, animation, you know, or general art and design program, it should be about who you are, you know, because that, that's what catches people's imagination when you open a portfolio and there's, there's this lovely personality in the portfolio, you know, and lots of ideas. That's, that's what catches your imagination. I think, you know, as Owen or Josh said, um, to do take time um, with, with your presentation as well, you know. Um, presentation is important. Um, you know, I always say to students when they're presenting their photography you know, for crit sessions for me, you know, um, you know good presentation will make um, uh, good work look excellent. Um, it will make okay work look good and it will make bad work look okay. You know, so <laughs> present it well, and it will do. You'll be doing yourself. You'll, whatever your work is, you'll be doing it. You'll be doing it justice. You know. Anybody got any questions on the floor? Um, I have one that I'm interested in. Um, in terms of when you were working on your portfolio, so this is for the students, um, or if anybody else wants to talk about it back in the day. Um, but did you have any support from outside of school when you were doing? Well, first of all, did you do your portfolio during sixth year to go on in, to college? And then if you did, did you take get support from outside school in terms of a class or anything like that? Uh, I did mine during sixth year, um, but my art teacher was a total space cadet. So um, <laughs> she was a special piece of work. But um, yeah, so I did mine kind of <laughs> under the guidance of my mum. And my mum teaches children's art and uh, was a bit of a slave driver. So whenever she caught me slacking, which is an important thing because I did a lot at that time, um, she whipped me back into shape. Um, so it can be done kind of on your own. Now, when I was in fifth year, I took a course during the summer for NCAD, which was too early. I really, I know, was it fourth year? The summer of fourth year, um, which is kind of a three-week thing where they not so much showed you how to do it, but just kind of told you that you know it was all about thinking. And again, it's all about ideas. Uh, the technique can be taught or can be picked up. 
uh, but reading the sixth period was uh, myself and another guy in my year who then decided he was going to do um, film instead. So <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely mind that. Um, I probably started mine about halfway through fifth year. Um, would have got a fair bit of help from my art teacher in sixth year. Um, would have not pretty much did it by myself. Um, the way body format works, the first year that I'd say 99% of Leaving Cert students go into is actually a portfolio course to get you into the full four year degree course. Um, so what most people do is they go and they apply to the animation course and like I say, a very, very small percentage of really, really talented, gifted people would get straight into the degree course, but the rest of us all go and do this portfolio course for a year. So the standard for the portfolio course wouldn't be as high as the other one, because like I say, they're expecting everyone to be coming in from sixth year with that same leaving cert standard of drawing. Um, and through that then you build up a proper portfolio and they teach you how to structure it all together and what you need and what you don't need on it. And you enter the portfolio course with the portfolio itself. Yeah, well yeah. you need a, you need the yeah. same port, you need your basic yeah. even your portfolio to get into that one, yeah. Um, yeah, I did mine all by myself. I uh, had no help really from in college or, or in school or at school. My, I was pretty much the first person in my school to actually go on to do something in art related, so it was pretty unheard of. So they didn't really teach uh, art that well at all in my school. <laughs> it was pretty much a DOS, a DOS class, so people they take it. Like, um, but I did a I did a PLC uh, before going into animation as well, um, so I like I think that really helped. I think you, you need that year straight out of school. It's nice to have uh, just to work on your portfolio. I think I think it takes a lot of time, so it's I I'd, I'd recommend a PLC like. Uh, and if any of you had one big piece of advice, sorry, Jerry, I'll yeah. in a second. But if you had one big piece of advice for any of the students that are now doing their leaving cert and trying to struggle with you know mocks, the portfolio, the leaving cert. Any big piece of advice? Do you have uh, lists are your best friend. <laughs> Just write out lists, do plans, put get a little calendar or something that you can mark off dates that you want to have something done by this date, and actually stick to it. And you'll find, like I still do it for everything, not just college related. I find it keeps my life in check. Um, just if you set these targets and you actually stick to them, you're not left with oh crap, I've got two months left to get a portfolio together, like, you know, you'll actually get something done every week, even if it's every two weeks, once a month, and it all starts to add up together, and before you know it, you'll actually have something there, and you won't be really putting in the effort for it. I'd say work consistently. Um, at the beginning, I worked in sprints, where I do, like, a week, and then um, nothing for another week, but if, as it progressed, I really learned just to work consistently, you know, have a set amount of time you're going to give it, because this is, ideally, this is what you want to do for the rest of your life. This should be a massive thing, you know? So I gave it a set amount of time and, you know, I generally went over that time, but worked consistently. And it meant that towards the end, the day before I submitted my portfolio, I could take that day off because it was done, you know? Which was a great feeling because there were some people I knew who were still, like, just got no sleep that week because they realized I have three pages to do, whereas I had known that I would have finished at that stage. So work consistently and definitely lists. I've listed everything. <laughs> Oh, I think they <laughs> 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 Sorry, Yes, um, I'd endorse uh, Alan's recommendation for a post leaving cert course uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, if you don't make the required CAO points for the course you want to do, you can always uh, go with the PLC route, the post leaving cert route, where you can spend a year in another college. Um, first of all, you get a sample of the type of area that it is, so you get a sense of am I up to doing another three or four years of study in this area, and is, is this going to give me the career that I'm looking for? So you can actually sample a variety of things. It also gives you the skills that you need. It gives you an opportunity to put together your portfolio of material if you, if you require that for a course. And a lot of, uh, particularly the, um, the Institute of Technology, have a linkage where if you do a year in a PLC course, you can then still join uh, an IoT course, like uh, an Institute of Technology course. Um, and you can carry your, your points with you. And sometimes you can jump into second year. It can happen, you can jump into second year of a course. So do keep that in mind. The PLC courses are very practical, they're very vocational, so they are, you get done and dirty with the subject, okay? So if you do not make the required points, certainly go the PLC route. It's, it's, I highly recommend it. 
as a, as a, as, a, as your plan B. Um, and uh, you know, try and do something that you want to do rather than just end up doing something because you didn't get what you wanted to do. Um, there's always next year to apply as well. Um, you know, and don't be disheartened if you know if you if you get if you don't get an offer from somewhere. You know, just keep. You've got to. I think you know if you want a career in art, design, or media, you, you you've got to be pretty dedicated. Um, you've got to keep going for it. Uh, you've got to be a self-starter. Um, just, just, just keep trying to, you know, a couple of people said, just keep making work. Um, I think it was Francis Bacon was asked where he gets his, where he got his inspiration from for his paintings, and he just said, well, actually, you know, the more work I do, the more inspiration I get, you know? Mm. So just, you know, get stuck in. Uh, just one more piece. Um, it's a good idea sometimes to tailor your portfolio for the specific college that you actually want to go to. Even if you're looking at doing the exact same course in two different colleges, the best example I've got is, I applied to Dunleary and Ballyfermot when, uh, when I did my leave insert and got accepted into Dunleary and was applied for the animation degree, like the diploma in Ballyfermot and got put into the, the PLC course. So the following year, having done a portfolio course for a year, I got accepted into Ballyfermot and got rejected from Dunleary with the same portfolio that I've been working on for a year. So different colleges do actually look for different things within it. Like I say, Bally Farm is very life drawing, life drawing, like they really stress it. Whereas Dunleary wouldn't have quite as much pressure on that sort of stuff. So how do you know what they look for in a portfolio? Um, come to things like this, uh, talk to first year students, um, because uh, they have it all fresh in their mind, you know, and um, talk to lecturers if you can. Um, go to open days. Yeah, it's all a really big thing. Like ask them at the open day. Yeah. What are you looking for? Yeah. Well, I, with, with NCAD, um, that, that sort of exactly the question that you've asked. That, that's why we produced this, which is the portfolio brief, and it's really just a project. You know, it, a guidelines. It gets you started, it pulls you onto the next stage, and then it gives you an ending. You know, so it, it gives you just a, a sort of a, a way of doing it. And it doesn't matter what program you're, you're applying for, if it's visual art of any description, some of the, the, the questions in, in the portfolio brief will help you to get started anyway. So, you know, it's not, you don't have to follow it completely for another program if, if you're particularly interested in another program, but you can take bits out of it and, and just something to get you started. The whole idea of the mind mapping, which is, you know, a really good way of, you know, sort of... Uh, throwing out, you know, ideas for yourself will work for anything. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, what program you want to go for. If, if you were to look at just that first section and did a whole series of mind maps, it could get you started for any program. Thank you. Anybody else? Can I just ask a quick question yeah. with regard to uh, Valley Fairman's portfolio course? Do you find many students who are on that course are using it or is it advisable even to use it as a vehicle towards NCAD? There is a course set up for that. They do it, uh, was it Art Design Mixed Media, which is goes pretty much straight into that. Like that's so the, they account for the brief? They, yeah, they, they go for their brief, like they, they'll tailor the uh, portfolio just for NCAD's brief. Mm -hmm. we're, going, we're going out there, um, myself and another member of staff are going out, out to, to Bally Fern, to that programme, yeah. to just to talk about the, the brief. You know, in the same way as in the, uh, the couple of evenings that we have in, in, in um, NCAD, we go through, like, what are your questions about the brief, you know, how, how, you know are you having problems with it? And, and I, you know, in reality, uh, we have to be very realistic. It doesn't matter where you're applying to, you know, even if you want to go to Crawford or, or Limerick, you know, actually understanding and, and working through the brief will assist you anyway, you know, so it's, it's, it's not only for the one thing. Yeah. That's actually very true. I got accepted in Crawford and Limerick, um, and pretty much any college I put my own forward for with the NCAA brief, so it wasn't like I was discriminating against because they were like, oh, he doesn't even want to come here. Um, it's, it's just great. It's a great guidelines to get you going, like, you know. So you would say you find the portfolio brief helpful because I've, I have heard some our teachers say that they find it's, it's very kind of, you know, it restricts the students, but I think that's maybe because they're not thinking, you know, as openly, but would you have found that it's... Extremely. I think, like, even this summer, uh, you know, you sit down and you realise that you can do whatever you want, and 20 minutes later you're watching telly because you don't know what to do, you know? This, this gives you the first step 
that says that's the way to go. Um, even if you end up going that way and taking a segue, it's the first step. It's an excellent way to start. Um, and like, there's so much freedom within it. Uh, my friend Ingrid did hers mainly in photography of things that she did. Um, my friend Kira, she was massive into drawing, and that's the way hers was geared. Like, you know, they're all there's so much freedom within it. Mm -hmm. Like one more question from these. So, just what type of research do you look for um, in portfolios? Was in terms of like, books and things like that. If I was looking at a portfolio, I I would want to see that someone is subsumed into is that the right word? into visual culture, you know, and try and get that across. Uh, but you know, you can get your inspiration from anywhere, from literature, you know, music. Uh, yeah, just immerse yourself in it and eat it all up. Right. Th I mean, th that's just something that's really important, you know. And and I think um, Owen uh, was speaking about it, and and, and um, Josh was speaking about it. The idea of you know opening a portfolio when you go to somebody's notebook or sketchbook in a portfolio, you know you begin to really see you know they they've chosen something and they're working with it, and you see it on worksheets or you see, see it on finished pieces of work. But what you generally see in the notebook is the kind of um, open investigation, you know, and and you see how sort of excited the person is about their subject. And it's exactly what you say. It, you see somebody immersed in something, and you see the excitement and the, the, the sort of the buzz that they're getting off of it, and you get a buzz off it looking at it. I mean, I you know I I'm looking at portfolios since 1980. I still, we still all go around a really good portfolio. Mm. People say, look at this one, you know, and everybody, you know, doing all other portfolios, they all look, at, you know, and it's a great buzz because you're looking at an amazing sort of a, another person's mind, how they look at things, how they see things, the fun that they're getting out of it, you know, and that's really exciting, you know. So if it's exciting for us, we can only imagine how exciting it was for the person making it, you know, and that's what's, I think that's, that's what gives you the buzz. I think, um, like, you know, your, your actual finished portfolio pieces should, you know, put a lot of time into, into editing them, as you said, like, you know, uh, get it down, get it so that it's all, all your best work that's going in there. Um, really, there's nothing that shouldn't go in a notebook if you can link it in any way towards your subject matter. Um, every saying like I wouldn't be tearing pages out of notebooks like even if you think it's crap it shows that you're you're doing a bit of research you're you're involved in it you know you're actually making an effort they're not looking for really nice pretty pictures in a notebook they're looking to try and see what your train of thought is you know how how you got to where it was you got and even if you don't have the end result somewhere in the portfolio just to show that you've actually gone through a bit of a journey and you haven't just said, oh, that's a nice idea, yeah, I'll draw that. Like, you know, you've had a few different variations of it, tried different medias, different whatever. On it. Make your notebooks bulging and bountiful. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Just um, on the subject of the brief, like, what about what time would the brief for 2014 come out? Uh, it comes out in March. Thanks. Yeah. It comes out March 2013, the 2014 brief comes out. And once it's out, anybody who wants to ring me or email me in college, there's no problem, you know, no with any questions. So in terms of the following academic years, so there are some scholarship places on that portfolio course that Josh mentioned. So they're in the prospectus, Teresa will point them out to you. Um, they're available to some schools. Um, that the college you're affiliated with. So just if you check that out, you might be eligible for a scholarship to the portfolio course. Um, anybody else? I, I, it's, in, it's in this. I'll have to find it again, but it's in here. I'm just going to ask the three students just to sum up, maybe just to give a bit of like, like an idea of what your college experience has been like so far. How would you kind of sum up art college and being an art student? <laughs> it's great. Honestly, uh, if I can advise you on anything, you know, people say, oh, you'll have no job. Ah, this job works out there, you know? It's the best thing, arguably, that's ever happened to me. Um, I went to school, I was never that academic. Uh, you know, I never did class too well, but you actually have to throw me out of the studio at 9 o'clock every evening because it's just, it's all I want to do. I'm here with people, and that's all they want to do. They want to be there creating work. They want to be the future artists of tomorrow. 
and even in, within design, it's so innovative and there's so much, you know, energy within the place. And also it's great crack if there's like, we party like no one else, so um, <laughs> definitely, that's my advice. <laughs> Three of the parties too. <laughs> but yeah, definitely go for it. Um, yeah, I pretty much echo most of that. Um, if you're lucky enough, I would consider myself extremely lucky to be doing something that I am incredibly passionate about. There's nothing else that I would rather be doing than what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter what college you go to in the end. Some of them are different, some of them are more academic, some of them have a better social life, whatever else. What's important is that you're doing something that's really important. Um, there is an awful lot of work in it. Like, there's no point in sugarcoating it. But uh, like Josh says, like I'm peeling myself off the computer after sitting there for eight hours and my eyes are sore and my arms are sore, but I still want to do more work because I actually enjoy it so much. Um, college life itself is pretty good crack, as to be said. Um, we're kind of a little bit different, I think, than the other two colleges because I'd say there's maybe 3,000 people in our building, if even that, and most of them are probably off every other day. Um, so it's quite a close knit community, you know, like we would know all the staff, you'd know the majority of the students, even in the classes that you're not in. Um, so it's a really nice atmosphere, you know, it's a good buzz around the college, and uh, like Josh said, there's, you, you buzz off other people that are there, you know, you see the passion that other people have and that they put into their work, and you share it with them, and you share yours with them, and that. Uh, yeah, I found it's it's very self-driven, which is what I like most about software. Like, it's it's if you have an idea, you can run with it. Tutors are there to help, but they're not there to decide for you. It's all up to you, and I really like that. Cause, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the self-driven thing is, is what what appeals to me most about software. Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave it there for this section. But the three colleges have some information set up over there, and they're all going to be over there as well to answer questions. <laughs> So um, make sure to ask about questions. It's work, this portfolio is to look at. Um, so just have a look around. Thank you.